The year is 1970 and you're looking for an authoritative vehicle that just screams money when you pull up to somebody's house or an establishment. Your choice might be this 1970 Cadillac Fleetwood Brougham. Back in 1970, many of the luxury vehicles were larger than the less luxurious vehicles. And this was the largest Cadillac that you could get and indeed the largest General Motors vehicle that one could procure in 1970, so long as you weren't looking for a limousine. The Fleetwood Brougham rode atop a 133-inch wheelbase, which compared to the Calais and DeVille series riding atop a 129.5-inch wheelbase, and it would be the last year for this particular body style of Fleetwood Brougham before it would be changed in 1971, along with the rest of the full-size Cadillac lineup, including the DeVille, Calais, and El Dorado series. For a base price of about $7,300 in 1970, or the equivalent of about $60,000 today, buyers got a vehicle that was 228 and a half inches in overall length and had numerous luxury features and appointments on the inside. In particular, the interiors came standard with a combination fabric and leather interior where the fabric was called Dumbarton cloth. You also got rear footrest if you wanted to have a little bit more comfort in the rear as standard equipment, and a reading light in the sail panel. Unfortunately, by 1970, the wood that adorned the door panels as well as the instrument panel was no longer made from, well, real trees. It was instead made from plastic, and it really wasn't convincing in the least in these vehicles. And that's rather unfortunate because while one might not necessarily expect real wood in some of these vehicles, even the pricey ones, in part because of durability concerns back then, Cadillac could have at least made the fake wood look convincing, and it just did not, especially in this price class. That said, there were some cool and interesting interior features of the 1970 Fleetwood Brougham. Take a look here at this picture of the interior. You can see that there's a divided front bench seat, a super long armrest that has multiple portions to it. And in 1970, Cadillac introduced this one-year-only steering wheel, this three-spoke design with the inlaid wood trim. And for whatever reason, this particular 1970 design wheel just never really wore well. It seems in many of these 1970 vehicles that the steering wheel just looks pretty ratty, and this is a low-mileage car. And it looks okay here, but many of them just doesn't look right, looks a bit out of place, and perhaps that's why they changed the steering wheel in 1971. You can also see here the wiper control, which was integrated into the door, a pretty interesting design and one that would stick around on Cadillacs until the 1974 model year when the dash would be redesigned and they would go to what I would say is my least favorite control almost of the 1970s, certainly the General Motors produced, the horrible L-shaped wiper control with the delay feature, if you got the delay feature, or the missed position if you didn't have the delay feature. Here's a closer look at the instrument panel, and this instrument panel was redesigned for the 1969 model year and was shared across the DeVille, Calais, Fleetwood, and Eldorado series, it really is a somewhat cheap-looking instrument panel, if we're honest with ourselves. And that full wood grain, as I mentioned before, isn't convincing. I love how they have the full wood grain not only adorning the instrument panel itself, but also on the headlight switch. You notice that there's a little full wood grain insert to cap it as well. Now, this car does have automatic climate control, which was pretty typical, although optional in Cadillacs. Yes, you did not get air conditioning standard. You had to get an AMC Ambassador if you wanted a standard air-conditioned equipped car in the early 1970s. But you can see that the automatic climate control does have a number of positions. It has a vent position more specifically next to off. This would just put the fan on a lower speed and have fresh air come out the upper registers. There is no economy setting in 1970. I guess Cadillac buyers weren't very concerned about fuel economy back then. And the air conditioning compressor operates full-time in the automatic setting as well as the defrost settings. At least it operates full-time until the outside temperature reaches below about 40 degrees. But you really couldn't have the car's climate control on any setting aside from vent and not have the air conditioning compressor on back in 1970. Here's a broader view of the instrument panel from the passenger side. And you can see again that fake wood that's adorning the instrument panel around the outlet vents. 
One thing that's interesting about this particular instrument panel is that on the driver's side of it, there's only two vents on the extreme left for the driver himself or herself. And then the passenger gets these four vents and you notice that there's certainly no airflow going to the driver from those leftmost vents because there's a divider on the instrument cluster there. And I don't know about yourself, but for me, I like to have quite a bit of air conditioning blowing in my face and I like to have it coming from both left and right. Can't do that on these Cadillacs. That was, I guess, pretty typical of the time period though. Many air conditioned cars just had three vents one on either side that was adjustable in a center vent that often could just be adjusted up or down or be fixed in some cases. Here's a photo of the rear door panel, which is similar to the front door panel. You can see what I mean by this faux wood grain being rather unconvincing. The door panel is all soft touch, and it does have a carpeted lower, except that area that is the faux wood grain. That's obviously not soft touch. But I think it just looks cheap and not necessarily befitting of a car whose base price was around $60,000. And that pull strap also just doesn't look very luxurious. It's a molded piece of vinyl and isn't something that feels great when you grab onto it. The doors on these cars also close okay. I wouldn't say they close as nicely as the Fords of the era. So this was one area in which Cadillac, I think, was letting down its buyers a bit in terms of overall quality was just the interior appointments by this time frame. At least the rear seat passengers did get some level of comfort, particularly with these integrated footrests. I've sat in these vehicles with the footrests, and I don't know if they're really all that comfortable compared to not having them, but I guess some people found them interesting, although I wonder what it would look like if you got into the car on snowy days and tried to use them. Probably didn't look very good for very long on many of these vehicles. Turning under hood, I will say one element of this 1970 Fleetwood that is just excellent overall is the engine and transmission combination. This is the last year for the high compression 472 cubic inch V8. It made 375 horsepower, and it really propelled this Fleetwood around with good speed. The throttle tipping on these engines isn't all that great, but when you stomp on the accelerator, they really do move well. You can see Cadillac also had its uniquely designed air conditioning compressor. That's the standard GMA6 Frigidaire air conditioning compressor. But Cadillac typically mounted it in the middle of the V so as to minimize vibration. No other GM division would do that. In the foreground, you can see the cruise control transducer. And that funky cylindrical looking thing that's suspended from the brace there is for the rear shock and the level control. That's a vacuum-based pump that would pump up the rear air shocks when a load was detected in the rear. Cadillac would later go to a electrical pump in the later 1970s as opposed to this vacuum-based pump, perhaps because it made some interesting noises under hood. Anybody who's heard these things operate, you'll hear a tick, 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 tick sound under hood when they're working. In any case, the 1970 Fleetwood Brougham was one large and in-charge car and certainly was styled to make a statement it's not necessarily beautiful, but it is a handsome car, and I love how the grill is just so in your face. That is certainly a front end that you wouldn't want staring at you in your rear view mirror. Hope you enjoyed this spotlight on the 1970 Cadillac Fleetwood Bro. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and right for some suggestions for you. Thanks again for watching.